before Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, I love this day. I love this day every single year. It's such an adventure. Um, so fun just to kind of like get things in order in regards to getting your kitchen ready, getting your meals ready, catching up with friends, doing all the fun things. So hello, hello. Do me a favor and put a hashtag hello lovely. I'm gonna be getting a little bit of makeup on chatting a bit about why I look so tired and why I need a little bit of makeup to perk me up and make me look like I'm one of the living. So keep me company. Hashtag hello lovely. Uh, will do the trick, my friend. So take care of that for me. And I would love to also see where you are tuning in from. I, of course, come from the littlest state in the United States, Rhode Island, rocking and rolling here in the Ocean State. The weather has been getting cooler. It's been super fun. Um, so I'm really pumped. I'm pumped for this weekend. I'm just putting a little bit of stuff on my skin just for some extra hydration because, as I said, it has been cold, absolutely cold. Jack Frost has been visiting our family. It's so cute. We love that movie, Rise of the Garden. Guardians. So the kids are always like, Jack Frost arrived last night. Jack Frost came and he killed the mosquitoes. You know, all that kind of cute stuff. So I have been using my exfoliating mask a couple times a week to really help slough off any of those dry, dead skin cells. And I've also been using my um, hydrating mask once a week. But you can never get too much hydration this time of year. Hi, Juanita. How are you? Watching from outside London. It's yay. Oh, I'm so excited you're, you're chilling on out. Thank you for tuning in, of course. Love to see that. Um, so hi, hi, hi. Yay. So excited. Tomorrow, of course, is American Thanksgiving. And there's a lot of stuff going on. The kids only have a half day of school. Uh, but I do want to feel a little bit more presentable. I talk a lot of times about how my taking care of my skin on my face in particular makes me feel more confident. So I really invest a lot in my skincare. I make sure that I keep up with my masks, whether it's my exfoliating mask that I use twice a week, my hydrating mask that I really need right now, different mask for different reasons, of course course and then I always use my daily skincare so you so I just used a little bit of my eye cream this is amazing stuff that really helps with the discoloration, helps with the puffiness, the fine lines. I also love a little bit of my Uplift Beauty Oil. These, this is, I call this liquid gold. Once again, as much hydration as I can be getting right now, I am gonna take it. So I'm give, gonna give my skin a moment to let that sink in, and as I do, I will begin working on my eyes. Um, I am going to brighten my eyes a smidge with my Skin Solution Concealer. And this I'm choosing in a bit lighter of a shade than my skin tone as I am going to be highlighting. I am going to look a little crazy though because I'm, I'm applying my concealer first and then my foundation. So just trust the process. Trust the process. It will make a big difference, I promise. I am going to put a little bit of hydrating primer on first before I do that. So I've been tired. I've been tired because it has been a beautiful, busy week. Are you an Outlander fan? If you are an Outlander fan, let me know in the comments below. And if you're an Outlander fan, are you a fan of the books and the TV show or just the show? And are you getting into the books? Because Outlander fans, we're all tired. We're all tired and we're having a blast right now delving into the latest book, uh, Go Tell the Bees I Am Gone um, by Diana Gabaldon in the Outlander series. Um, it's just, it's been something that we've been waiting for a super long time. And I feel like over the past couple of years with the panorama that's gone on, uh, you know, the delay in having the, sh the beloved show, we've just been waiting for something. And this has been such an exciting thing. It's a little early Christmas present. The book is ginormous. Um, but of course, you know, we're all starting to delve into that and really enjoying the pages. So we've got that going on. I've got the normal hubbub of the holiday season with my family, which is exciting and great, but it's also exhausting. And um, also, I've been having weekly specials that are about to turn into daily specials at my website, minutewithmary.com. So this week, my special is all about lip care. We're talking about that hydration. Ugh, chap lips. Chap lips are one of the bane of my existence. Do you suffer from chap lips? Hi, Jessica. How are you? Jessica and Juanita, do you have chap lips ever? Because my husband has never had chap lips. I didn't even know that that was humanly possible, that you could not have chap lips. I just thought it was part of being human, part of living in a dry, cold environment in the winter. Nope, he has never had it. So he doesn't even understand when I try to explain to him 
you know, the flaking or the, the burning, or even if you lick your lips or go like that, how it actually makes it worse and yet you still do it. Do you ever do that where your lips are dry and you still lick it anyway and you know it's not the right thing to do? So, um, but anyway, this week's special is for people like me, people who deal with dry lips, especially this time of year. Um, I've got a brand new overnight lip mask product that is going to give massive hydration to the lips. You just apply it and you wear it overnight it's not sticky or tacky, really helps soak in all that goodness. And then I have it bundled with a day treatment lip treatment lip butter, which is like a lightly tinted adult chapstick. One of the problems with chapsticks that are sold frequently, at least here in the U.S., is they have a lot of stuff that actually dry your lips. It feels good in the beginning, but then it dries your lips later. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever had a product where you're like, oh, it feels good, and then it either doesn't stay, doesn't do its job, or you feel like your lips are just as dry, if not drier? That's because it's often, sadly, uh, filled with bad filler product that makes it look good, fills it up a little bit, but it's cheap for a reason. So um, this, these products that I have, the lip butters, they're a grown up, naturally based, seriously jam-packed with goodness lip butters. And you can choose from a clear shade to pinks and reds and burgundies, all sorts of pretty colors available, um, but it's a nice little bundle. So that's what I've got going on this week. But if you do, if you have dry lips or if you have a loved one with dry lips, this is going to be something you're going to want to check out. It's also a great giftable item because I feel like everybody <laughs> has dry lips aside from my husband. Aside from my husband. All right. So I'm just putting that lighter concealer underneath my eyes. I'm bringing it up here to kind of lift up that eye area. But as I said, I've just been dealing with my skin being a little showing I'm a little tired because I am a little tired with all the holiday stuff and then these deals that have been going on as we're running for a massive promotion with my company. Uh, it's just been a lot. It's been a lot, but it's been a good lot. Do you ever have that where you've got a busy season of life, but it's good? Like you're okay with it being busy because that's where I am right now. I'm okay with it being busy, but I'm not okay with myself look to, looking tired right now. So I'm taking the time to do a little extra bit of makeup and skincare to help things get even done out. So when I put on my face primer, I really wanna let that sit in my skin for a little bit before I go crazy and add too much stuff to it. So I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of eyeshadow first. I'm gonna go first with um, this shade right here, Business Like, it's a pretty matte pink. So just gonna quickly swipe that on my eye. It doesn't get any easier. Talk about a great stocking stuffer. These liquid eyeshadows are bananas good. So I need to get so cold uh, I got the heating on, still resting with my fractured ankle, started to listen to Clanland's Almanac with Sam and Graham, love the banter between, and then the copy of Bees arrived today. Yay! Awesome! I know, it's so funny how the two books for Outlander fans came out, you know, a day apart, essentially. Um, so, or is it the same day? What day is today? Today is Wednesday, so it came the same day, right? It came on the same day. See, this is where I get. I get to losing track of time. Jessica says, I love the Outlander show and I'm trying to read through the books now. If you have a difficult time reading through them, Jessica, oh, Lumos is here. My kitty's here. Um, I suggest the audiobooks. Davina Porter, who is the audiobook um, reader, she is downright amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know, not all audiobooks are equal. I will tell you that. I've been very spoiled by having two of my favorite fandoms, Harry Potter and Outlander, have exceptional audiobook readers. And then I try and I listen to some other audiobooks with lesser people, and it's just not the same. It's just not the same. But I will tell you, you can totally trust the audiobook versions of the Outlander series. All right, so I added that pretty color. You even saw I just blended it with my fingers. It doesn't get any easier than that, my friends. Such a beautiful, beautiful product. I am going to deepen things up a little bit with more of this purpley mauve shade in the outer V of my eye. And I probably will use a brush for this part. I might not need to. It's not too deep, so actually I might be okay just to continue to use that finger. Uh, Misty says, yes, love show, listening to book three now, love, love, love books. Awesome, Misty! Now, have you just started this series, or had you read, um, books one and two before, and now you're just getting into three, or is it because of your love of the show that's made you want to get into the books? So see how I just deepened it up, just with a little bit of a darker color. You know, when you're working with your outer V, you don't have to think deep, deep, dark colors. It can just be a smidge darker, 
when it helps add that dimension and makes your eye stand out a little bit more, makes it look a little bit bigger, kind of oops up your eyeshadow look a little bit. So never be afraid to try it. Even if you think it's a little not dark enough, try it out. Try it out. Be like Bob Ross, you know, make some happy little mistakes. You never know. You might be surprised. Jessica says, oh, I will definitely have to give the audiobooks a try. And they should have the audiobooks, Jessica, at your local library. Um, and I love how audiobooks now work with the local libraries. You just get to like rent it out for a time frame and it gets sent to your phone device. You don't even have to go to the library. They kind of like give you the MP3 access through, at least through mine, it works through an app. So I find it really, really useful. Uh, Juanita also loves the audiobooks. I love that. And Jessica says, I love that eyeshadow. It's gorgeous and matches your shirt. I thank you. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for purple as that is the promotion that I'm running for right now with my company. Uh, I have to double check. Last time I checked, we were 80% there. 80, 80%. So really excited. Now the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually make this a three-step liquid eyeshadow look. As you saw, you can put on one shade and it looks fabulous. You can do two shades. looks fabulous. I'm going to go all in and do three shades because why not the same method of placement can be used with your pressed eyeshadows too so I'm just doing a light shade in this inner corner now this is the shade glassy it's a white shade as you blend it out it adds just a little bit of lightness and shimmer but when it's super saturated you can see it really has that light catching white element to it so this is the way that I like to use my eyeshadows. I like a light color on the inner corner, a dark corner on the uh, outside corner. I just find it, it really elevates my eye look. And um, I love that this catches the light. So using some kind of white or light reflecting property kind of eyeshadow right in there will really help bring attention to your eye. And see how I blended it out? It wasn't too crazy. When I apply it at first, it looks a little crazy, but then when you blend it, it's quite, quite nice. So just motion it around, blend it out. You can use your brush. You can use whatever you'd like. But we have not put up my Christmas tree. This is like a deep, dark secret that I'm embarrassed about because I, I joke that I'm part Christmas elf. Um, and I, I'm so upset we don't have our Christmas tree yet. But we've just been really busy. Blake has been sick. Um, so we've just been, you know. Trying to play catch up and I'm also telling myself I can keep it up later Nobody's gonna come in my house and tell me I have to take my Christmas tree down So if I feel like I haven't gotten it up enough and I haven't gotten enough of the sparkle and the lights and the beauty I'll just keep it up longer. That's what I'm gonna do. All right I am gonna go in and do a little bit of eyeliner And let's see if this is the one that I want Yeah, just a black pencil eyeliner I like to use black pencil eyeliner as I am blind as a bat and I don't have my contacts and I've got, this is going to be a glasses day. Um, but also I like that I can smudge it. So I have a little bit of a bumpy, bumpy kind of texture to my eyelids. It's just something that's happened over time. And what I love is with the pencil, if I apply it within about 30 to 60 seconds, I can still smudge it either with a Q-tip or an eyeliner brush and really kind of help wiggle it so it all looks like a nice smooth line rather than a harsh black line or kind of a jagged thing. So I don't pull my eyelid. You'll see a lot of people do that. I don't do that. It's up to you if you want to do it. It's just for me, I've got enough crow's feet growing so I don't need to um, add any more to that area. So I just kind of make short little strokes, but I get right into that lash line. I do have slightly saggy eyelids, so I don't want to do a big, big, thick black eyeliner just yet. So going back and forth. But what we are hoping is that we can get the Christmas tree up possibly today and then decorate it during Thanksgiving. We're doing a really small, simple Thanksgiving this year as I already did Thanksgiving. I'm a cheater. I double dip into Thanksgiving. I gotta be real with you. I love this holiday. I love the food. I love the simplicity of it. It's just so sweet. Um, so we had an early Thanksgiving uh, during the weekend of Canadian Thanksgiving, which is in America, either Columbus Day weekend or Indigenous Peoples Day weekend, um, depending upon where you live. So we uh, did it on that weekend because it was already a holiday weekend. It was easy to do. It was, we actually like, it, the weather was nice so we could spend a lot of time outside. So that is what we did and I loved it. But 
I don't want to skip real Thanksgiving, so <laughs> we're just going to do it again, but on a smaller scale. So I'm just going to use actually my liner shader brush, and I'm going to take that liner end, and as I said, just kind of smudge it right into those lashes, soften that line. I am going to be wearing magnetic lashes today too. And for me, when I'm using my magnetic lashes, I do like to have a base of the pencil eyeliner first so I can smudge it and get it into all those little nooks and crannies of the texture of my eyelid. If your eyelids are smooth as glass, you lucky duck, you probably don't have to do this step. You're like, what do you mean texture on your eyelid? But if you know, you know, right? <laughs> if you know, you know. So this is a step that I've just had to do as I've gotten a little older as my skin has changed a little bit and it is fine. <laughs> but see how it often softened, it also softened it up a little bit, the appearance of it. Um, Misty says, it's because of my love of the show for sure, just started books this year and they add so many wonderful extra details and seem like extra scenes. I enjoy your Outlander podcast, by the way. Thank you, Misty. You're so sweet to say that. Thank you. We're excited to, um, to start podcasting about Outlander again. Of course, the date came out for season six. March 6th, which is actually Blake's birthday weekend, so it's perfect, perfect timing. A little later than I thought it was going to be. I was pretty, pretty sure that it was going to be more close to Valentine's Day, but, you know, if we have to wait a little longer, it'll be okay. And then I'm going to have to figure out the, the finale, when that's going to be, because Easter is somewhere around there, and I don't know if they always take Easter off, or... Who knows what. All right, so did the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go in and smudge that. Once again, having a great liner brush really makes a big difference. You can just wiggle it right into your lashes. The purpose originally of eyeliner, because let's be real, you get to do all sorts of fun things with it, but the original purpose of eyeliner was to enhance the full look of the base of your lashes. You don't necessarily want to have, you know, lash line and a little bit of skin still showing and then your eyeliner. You really want it to just be nice and cohesive to blend right into that. And that being said, another fun tip you can do is to take that same pencil eyeliner and go underneath and really wiggle it in, making sure that the base of those lashes look super, super thick and full. I especially recommend this for people who you know, love mascara or love the look of false eyelashes. One of the best things you can do is use a good eyeliner to really get in there and make sure that the base of it is set up for success. So yeah, we're hoping to, it depends upon Blake and his health, uh, but we're hoping to do um, some, some upcoming Outlander podcasts soon. He has not been well, so we appreciate all of our podcast listeners just being ever so kind and, and patient uh, with his healing process. All right, so we've got that eyeliner going on. If you want your eyes to stand out a little bit more, you can also do eyeliner on the lower lashes. I might do that. I might not. I'm going to figure that out as I go, but oh, I know what I needed. Dun, 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 dun. I need my magnetic liner because I am putting on those fake lashes today. Almost forgot this important step. So the magnetic eyeliner, you got to shake it up. You can't feel any magnets in it, but somehow it's emulsified inside the liquid, which is really cool. But do shake it before each use. And then I just go and I just do like little dashes right near that lash line on top of that pencil eyeliner. But what I love about this is I didn't have to necessarily be super precise with this liquid magnetic liner because I already made a really nice line with the pencil. It's just, it makes it nice and forgiving. I will also say, so magnetic eyeliner, it's got, mine, mine has really good grip to it, which is awesome because it's gonna keep my magnetic lashes on all day, but it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to wash off. So if you have this pencil eyeliner underneath, it creates an easier barrier to wash off. You just need to use like a liquid makeup remover or a cleansing cloth to help break it down. It does need, you know, some kind of like an oily based cleanser to break the magnetic eyeliner down easily. But as I said, if you put it on top of pencil eyeliner, it comes off a lot easier. Fun little inside tip right there for you. All right, so I have to keep my eyelids slightly closed so that that way the liquid magnetic eyeliner can dry a smidge. But as I do that, I'm gonna to start to go in with my foundation. 
Yeah, so I'm really excited. It's so funny though because, you know, obviously I'm married and I want to spend time with my husband. I'm a mom. I want to spend time with my kids. It's a holiday weekend, but there's a big part of me that just wants to sit in a cozy corner and read a book. <laughs> <laughs> just wants to delve into the new Outlander book. Oh my gosh. I don't know if any of you ever had that where you're like, all I want is to sit with my cat and my book. When did this happen to me? <laughs> I pretty much have always been a book lover though. Not gonna lie. All right, gonna go in with a smidge of foundation and then I will even out my skin tone, which will be delightful since my skin is a little, little pink today. A little on the pinky side. Thank you, Misty. Right. I always like to start my foundation in the center of my face and then I blend it out. This is going to help neutralize a lot of this pink. All of my foundations do have skincare built inside of them. So that is one thing that I want to let you know is that at Minute with Mary, I really do care about your success with it, making sure that your natural beauty can shine through as much as possible, taking care of that skin, not just covering up things that make you feel uncomfortable or less confident, but also helping your skin in the process. You know, for me, I don't often wear loads and gobs and gods of makeup. It's, I know that my videos take a while, but it's because I'm talking <laughs> while I'm doing it and I'm teaching while I'm doing it. But for the most part, you know, what I apply, I could wear every single day. Um, you know, I go all out when I'm going to a wedding or, you know, to a special date night or something. But for the most part, I just want to look polished have it stay, you know, long lasting wear, but also then having it uh, be, be good for my skin in the process. So just taking this Kabuki brush, this is my favorite brush for foundations that are more of the medium to fuller coverage style. And if you haven't been color matched by me, just let me know. I can do it in a jiffy. I can really help make sure that not only we know what your foundation and concealer coloring would be like, but when I color match you, I'm actually able to unlock all the different secrets of your face and find out which lip colors would be best for you as well, which is pretty cool. And then don't forget my special through Thanksgiving is on lip care. So we're talking about the hydration with your lips. When he says it's pretty much what I'm down to my eldest cat on my lap, finishing off a book, The Darkest Hour. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, that's, that's my, you're living my dream life right now, Juanita. <laughs> I know that you're injured though, so that part isn't a dream life, but um, know that, know that I, you're, what you're doing right now sounds pretty dang good. Sounds pretty dang good to me right now. I'm looking for my stick foundation. Dun, 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 dun. Where are you? Of course I'm doing this blindly too, which isn't that good of an idea. All right, well, we're just gonna go for this one. I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring. Do, do, do. I've got this giant magnified mirror right here. If you're like, what are you looking at? I'm looking at a mirror so I can actually see what I'm doing. Because my glasses, of course, are right next to me. So this is going to add a little bit of dimension to that face. going to help shorten the appearance of my forehead. And then I do go in with some bronzer. And this all just adds dimension. Okay, and when you get used to it, if you're not used to doing multiple steps of makeup, I will tell you practice makes it go a lot quicker. So if when you do apply things for the first time and it takes you a little longer, just like anything, you know, think about when you were a kid and you learned how to tie your shoes and how long it would take you to tie your shoes. And now you can do it just like that. So it's really all just about allowing yourself the patience to try new things, to practice new things, and I promise you, you're going to be very surprised by how quickly you can learn your skills. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of bronzer right now with my big old powder puff brush, and this is going to add some warmth. Add some warmth to this face, even though it's chilly outside. So we got the turkey, got the gravy, and we're doing things really simple. I am in a conundrum. I did ask for advice and I got so much helpful hints because Blake does not like pie. And since we're not having a big Thanksgiving celebration, we're not going to have an assortment of too many desserts. We're not, usually when we have a big one, I mean, we've got like six, seven different desserts. We go wild with desserts in our family. Um, but since it's gonna be pretty intimate, I think one or two desserts is gonna be just fine. My kids and I love pie. 
I have not found a pie that I don't like. I'll be real with you. I love all sorts of pie. I love fruit pies, especially. I love pumpkin pie. Um, <laughs> my kids love it too. And Blake hates pies. He hates fruit pies. He hates pumpkin pie. I don't know what he has against it. May just not be like sweet enough or whatever. Um, but he's a big, you know, cake person. And I like cake, but I feel like at Thanksgiving you want to have pies. So my plan is I think I'm going to make hand pies, hand pumpkin pies for me and the kids. Uh, just little ones made in muffin tins. And then that way I can save it easily. Um, honestly, we'll probably just eat them all that same day, <laughs> but I'm going to make that. And then I had seen some recommendations for some other items. Uh, tiramisu was one of them. I never thought about doing like a different, I don't know, like a different nationality dessert. I've always been a quite traditional, you know, what is New England and, you know, cranberries and, you know, the traditional Thanksgiving kind of foods, but we may have to branch out. We may have to branch out. Uh, Juanita says, oh, what dessert did you choose to make? Yeah, I haven't chosen yet. I haven't chosen. <laughs> and I might have him make it. I might make the pie for me and the kids. And let's let him choose his own adventure. Because we also usually do a traditional Danish dessert that's been passed down through his family. Uh, it's called hard sauce and plum pudding. But... I don't think we're going to do it this this um, holiday. It is very, very time consuming. It is a boiled pudding, which is a boiled cake. And it takes the better part of the day. And you have to stand over the stove and take care of this thing like it's a little puppy. It drives me crazy. I'll be real, friends. <laughs> I am not a fan of how long it takes to make it. Um, and because it's going to be a small group of us, we don't think that the juice is worth the squeeze. So we're probably just gonna leave it for Christmas and do it then. All right, which blush do I wanna do? I'm gonna do this blush. Uh, Kathy says, I'm also in front of a magnifying mirror doing makeup, getting ready for work. Kathy, look at us. We're like just gal pals. We're like in college doing our makeup together, getting ready for class. I love it. Misty says, it's a great idea. You could do the chocolate chip cookies in a little tin too. Oh, that's nice. Blake does a great job with chocolate chip cookies, I will say. He's, he's pretty amazing with, with the chocolate chip cookie recipe. All right, so I'm just gonna apply some blush. I am going to apply some setting powder just to kind of set this makeup in place. Setting powder helps lock it in your face, uh, make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Apply a little bit of blush right there sometimes just to add a little sun-kissed look to my face. All right, let's go in with some of that setting powder before I, before I scratch my face. <laughs> oh, no, there we go, little hair. Come on, guy. Come on. There we go. So setting powder is going to lock it in. We had the primer on the bottom to create a nice flat canvas to also act like Velcro for the makeup on my face. I applied the makeup, and now I'm going to lock it in. This is the way to hold it, Mary. I'm going to lock it in with this here um, setting powder. All right. I'm using a setting powder that is empty, so that won't work. Gotta throw that bottle away. Ooh, come on. Come on. Here we go. This is my setting powder. Please excuse me. <laughs> All right. Doodles says your makeup is totally popping. Oh, thank you, Doodles. You're so sweet. All right. So I'm going to set this makeup with this setting powder. It also acts like a little bit of a filter. So that way my pores show up a little less, which is cool. We'll mattify the look a little bit if you like more of a matte look. You're so sweet, doodles. Yeah, so some people have said tiramisu, some people have said cheesecake. The problem with cheesecake is myself and my son are both mildly lactose intolerant. I can handle frequently, I can handle, you know, a little bit of cheese if it's in a sandwich here or there, but I can't do straight up ice cream. I definitely can't do cheesecake. And I probably could just get um, a lactate pill. It's that same hair, I'm telling you. There we go. I could probably just take lactate pills, but my body has just had so many bad experiences with lactose that I don't actually crave like things like cheesecake anymore. <laughs> just not my fancy. All right, I'm gonna go in and do a little bit with these brows, finish things up, and we'll be good to go. But I'm just so thankful to be able to 
celebrate this holiday. It is going to be a little different than we've had in the past, but as I said, we need it to be a little more low key since Blake hasn't been well and just want to, want to, you know, keep it intimate, which, which we can do. Just filling in these brows ever so gently. You know, if you're someone who needs to fill in your brows, you don't need to go and draw the whole things in uh, entirely. You can start off by just putting a light dusting, adding a little structure. So I like to add a little structure underneath the bottom of my brow and then the top of my brow. I add in structure for the tail and then I lightly go over anywhere that is either balding in my eyebrows or has too much silver. Because just like the hair on my head, my eyebrows are starting to turn a little magical. And that's what I'm calling my silver hair. My daughter was very concerned a while back. Mom, are you getting old? Why do you have so much silver in your hair? And I said, I'm just magical, honey. It's not old. It's magical. All the elves and her favorite stories and stuff have silver hair. So I said, see, I'm just magical like them. All right, I am going to go. I'm going to make Blake's day. I'm going to do eyeliner, top and bottom. He'll be so happy. <laughs> He'll be like, this is the best day ever. I don't usually do eyeliner top and bottom, but you know, whatever. It's a holiday week. It does um, make your eyes stand out a little bit more, as you can already see. But for me, I don't always do it in the day as I find it makes my eyes look a little bit smaller. Um, I will say when you do top and bottom, you are gonna wanna make sure that you're wearing very good mascara. You know, maybe even use utilize a lash primer to really get that length. Maybe even have some um, magnetic lashes just because you don't want it just to be eyeliner and your lashes being short and not really showing. But you can see the difference, right? It's like, here's my eye. It's, it's really, really strong when you add that lower eyeliner. Do, do, do. Go on in, make it happen. I can't talk too awfully much in this part. Don't want to poke myself in the eye. And then I take it a little bit right on that lash line, that lower lash line. Might even take that smudger brush that I was using, that liner brush, and kind of smudge that line out. But for me, I do this more for, as I said, my date nights, my weekends. But essentially today, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, it feels like a weekend, right? It's the day before our big holiday. It's often a big travel day, but won't be traveling. There we go. I have to check out the Macy's parade. I don't even know what they're doing or anything, but that is one of my big things. The kids know it. They know mama's gonna go wild. Gonna go enjoy that Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. All right, so we got that eyeliner going on. I am going to put on a little bit of mascara. I'm not going to do as much as I normally would if I wasn't wearing lashes. If I wasn't wearing lashes, I would do some lash primer and go to town with my mascara. But right now I just need a light coat to make it stand out and uh, to make it not stand out against my magnetic lashes. So I'm just taking the littlest one from the Twisted Mascara getting those itty bitty baby lashes. It's so cool. There's two wands in it. So there's that little wand and then if you spin it at the silver, there's a nice big wand. So it really is helpful to get those lower lashes, the inner or outer corners. I absolutely love this mascara. It's infused with biotin and keratin, so it's actually going to be a nice treatment for your lashes. It really helps them stay strong. But I just do a little light coat with that little baby lash before I apply my magnetic lashes. And this is great just because the magnetic lashes are black. You know, I want my nat natu natural lashes. Ooh, got a little tongue twisted there. I want my natural lashes to blend into them. Oh, Juanita, you're so sweet. Thank you. I'm feeling better. That's the thing. You know, I want to feel better. I, I was feeling tired and um, I wanted to feel a little better. I'm realizing I didn't put any eyeshadow down below. So I'll fix that right before I get on my magnetic lashes. And then I'm going to get be all set and ready for the day when you do take your eyeshadows up a notch and you do this eyeliner all around your eyes i do suggest you take whatever eyeshadow you had on the top lid and bring it to the bottom lid as well and i'm going to show you what that means what that looks like so i'm going to take the color that i had in my outer v it was this kind of purpley mauve shade called decisive and i'm going to put it on this lower lid right here i should have done it before the eyeliner but it's okay 
Happy little mistakes once again. And you can use either a crease brush or your finger. Crease brush is a little bit more uh, small, so you can get a little bit better in there. But when you use an eyeshadow on this lower lid, it really completes the eye look. It really helps pull it all together. And it makes your eyeliner less dramatic. Can you see a difference between these two eyes? I hope you can. But I really do, I love it. So even if you don't use eyeliner, if you're not going for that super dramatic lined look, putting that eyeshadow below will once again really make your eyeshadow look more cohesive. All right, got a little bit of eyeliner in there. No, we'll just blend it out, blend it out. There we go. Awesome. Can't go wrong with that. Kathy says, is there such a thing as a trial size foundation? Great question, Kathy. I got something better. You ready for this? So, at Minute with Mary, I want you to try things on. I really, really do. I want you to try it. I want you to love it. <clears throat> I do have access sometimes to swatches. <clears throat> Excuse me, getting a frog in my throat. And I didn't bring water up here. Um, <clears throat> but if you wanted to try a foundation, you can actually order it from my site. <clears throat> oh, goodness me. And um, within 14 days, try it all out. And if you do not 100% love it, I send you 100% of your money back. It's as simple as that. Uh, or I send you a coupon for the product credit plus an extra $10 coupon, and you can try a different product. So let's say you liked the color of the foundation, but you wanted to try a different type. Maybe the finish wasn't right. Maybe you got a dewy finish and you're realizing, no, I think I want more of a matte finish. If we do it within the first 14 days, I send you back a coupon so that, that way you can just order a different product. And I add an extra $10 to it for um, just for like letting me know and trying it out. So it's really risk-free. You get to try it on out, if you don't love it, you either get your money back or I send you a coupon so we can try something different. So rather than doing a trial size, it's essentially like you get to try the full size. And if you don't like it, I just send you the money back. Easy, easy. You don't have to worry about shipping anything back or going to the post office. I feel like the post office right now is as bad as the DMV. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's essentially like you get a full size trial. But I'm pretty good about helping you find out which type and which color is best for you. All right, so I just applied those quick magnetic lashes. They just adhered very quickly right to that magnetic liner. They'll stay on nicely all day. I do have uh, anchors that I like to use personally on the inner corners of my eye. It's just the way that my eye is shaped that even though I have that magnetic liner, I like the added insurance of having those anchors. So these are what the anchors look like. They're just little itty bitty magnets and I'm just gonna quickly apply one of those to each of the inside corners of my eye. Misty says, you look gorgeous, ready for the day. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, I feel much better. Uh, thanks for the little chat, hopefully it feels better soon, your hair is stunning. Wish my gray came in as pretty as yours, it doesn't, so I'll continue to color it. It took me a while. I've been wanting to, to embrace my gray for a very, very, very long time, and my hairdresser told me, um, you know, Mary, you have to wait. Oh, did I already apply it? Probably already did. Did you get on there, Anchor, and I not notice because I'm blind? Yes, I did. <laughs> Look at me. I'm like, I felt it. It's such a small little little uh, magnet. Come here, buddy. We're going to try that one more time. This time, I'll actually pay attention and look inside my magnifying mirror. There we go. Okay. Hello. There we go. Um, but yeah, I would ask my hairdresser once a year, can I go gray yet? Can I go gray yet? And she told me that she would let me know when I was 40 to 50% gray, when I could start my transition. So that is what happened. So I'd say just, you know, have an honest conversation with your hairstylist. If you ever do want to think about growing out your, your natural grace, um, because they can see where the coloring really is. You know, we knew that most of mine was up here on the crown. The least of mine, believe it or not, is around my face. So it was hard because a lot of people wouldn't believe me when I'd say, no, I've got a lot of silver. Um, and now it's just come in really sprinkled throughout quite nicely. But most of it, as I said, is actually back here, which is rare. A lot of people get it more in the front of their face. And, you know, that's why they go and they dye it because everyone can see it. And 
mine was always in the back. All right, um, so on my lips right now, I don't know if you could tell, I've just got this clear kind of gloss product going on. This is my Hottie Lip Plumper. Um, it's actually included in the upgrade of this week's bundle. So this week's bundle, just to recap, is an overnight lip mask treatment. You apply it on your lips. It will look similar to this. You apply it on your lips and you sleep in it. It helps hydrate your lips, helps get rid of those lip wrinkles, helps get rid of the chapped lips that you might be dealing with. And you can even use it as a light coat throughout the day if you just like the look of the gloss. Then the second item of the bundle is your choice of a nourishing lip treatment lip butter. So it comes in all sorts of different shades and I'm going to apply one in just a moment. All sorts of different shades. These are infused with shea butter and vitamin E. Um, I also have a clear one so you can just apply it on your lips and that's kind of what you wear during the day. These are great gift items. So if you have a teenager, a sister, a mother, honestly, you could give the clear one to your kids or your husband. Um, it's a great, it's an adult chapstick. You know, chapsticks, as I said earlier in the video, chapsticks often have um, some pretty bad products and ingredients inside of them that actually end up making your lips even drier. You may be like, why do I apply chapstick all the time and yet my lips are still dry? That might be why. So when you want to make sure that you're actually nourishing your lips and helping from the inside out, you're going to want to have a good product. Uh, so the upgrade to that bundle. So the, the first tier of it is you get your lip mask and your lip butter. If you wanted to upgrade, you could also get my lip plumper. And this helps actually your natural lips get a little bit fuller. You're not going to have duck lips. You're not going to look like you had any injections or fillers or anything happen. But it will help for me. It gets rid of those little lip wrinkles. It helps the edges of my lips look a little bit more pronounced. So I sometimes even like to apply it just like I did right now before I apply a lip product so that that way this, the application goes a little smoother. Sometimes I even wear it by itself. So that's just a little upgrade. Great, once again, giftable items. You can either buy the bundle and keep it all for yourself, gift the whole thing, or even break it up. So this shade right here is the shade Date Night in my lip butter. It's kind of like a rusty, rusty red with a little bit of a cool tone. I've been wearing it a lot this week, showing the versatility. Because the cool thing with these, since they're so light, remember it's got that shea butter, that vitamin E. If you just apply a light coat, it's a very light color. But if you go over it a few times, it will the color will intensify. So I'm just going to go for a light coat today. Just super light. I'll go a little extra around the edges. And it just feels like butter. Very, very soft. And I love these for my kids. My kids like me have pretty bad chapped lips. So I did a light swath over the whole lip and now I'm just going a little extra, almost like a lip liner. There we go. And you can even put the lip plumper on top if you'd like. So, dun 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 dun. Add that for the sheen and I think we are good to go my friends thank you so much for keeping me company on this minute with Mary um, I really do I would love to help you if you have any questions whatsoever Kathy if you do want to try out any of my foundation send me a little message I can color match you see which one might be the right type for you don't forget this bundle only goes through Thanksgiving so it only goes through tomorrow it's all about lip care so if you're someone who doesn't wear a lot of makeup for one reason or another know that I don't believe you have to wear makeup first off, but if you do have dry lips, this is the bundle that I want you to think about. Keep your eyes open as I am going to be having ongoing sales. I'm going to have 24 hour flash sales going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. When you think about shopping local or shopping small, I also want you to think about me as all the, um, the purchases at minutewithmary.com do directly benefit my family. I really, really appreciate your support. I hope that you have a great day and I'll talk with you soon. Thanks for hanging out on this minute.